My apologies. My apologies, we're a little bit late starting, but I'd like to welcome everybody to this meeting. This is the Maidenhead Development Management Committee, and it's today is Wednesday, the 15th of June 2022. My name is Councillor Maureen Hunt, and I'll be chairing this meeting. So the meeting's been held in person and also via Zoom streamed live to the public on YouTube. And all attendees, um, the participation in the meeting indicates consent to the audio and video being streamed live and acknowledgement <laughs> that after the meeting, it will continue to be available in the public domain. Now, um, for everybody here, we haven't got microphones and we're going to try and keep our voices quite high so you can hear them. But if you have problems, please let me know. Okay, Harry. So firstly, it would be useful if all panel members and officers would introduce themselves so that the public are aware of who is in this meeting, who we are, and the role that we're undertaking. So I'm going to go from myself and I'll work from my right. My name is Councillor Maureen Hunt. I'm chairing this meeting. And I'm a councillor for Hurley and the Wardens. Shan Sade, I'm the Development Management Service Manager, so I'm here as a panelist. Uh, councillor Leo Wardens, Vice Chairman. Councillor Gopi Bangra, member of this panel, and representing the Point of the Order. Councillor Jerry Tarr, I'm a member of the panel, and I'm with the Council of Discipline. Councillor Bernard Sotter, I'm a member of the panel, and I'm representing the Council of Discipline. Councillor Bernard Sotter, I'm a member of the panel, and I'm representing the Council of Discipline. Councillor Bernard Sotter, I'm a member of the panel, and I'm representing the Council of Discipline. Councillor Jeffrey Hill, I'm a member of the panel. Councillor John Baldwin, board member of the panel, voting member of the panel. Councillor Franklin, Eric T. Manchin, board of Excellence, and the Council of Discipline. And I might believe the same contract to the army of the AFS. Councillor Jeffrey Hill, 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 and the capacity in which you're speaking, if appropriate. I'll also ask officers to speak at appropriate times. <coughs> so I'm, I'm sure this won't happen, but if any individual attempts to disrupt the meeting, I'm able to use my powers in the constitution to adjourn the meeting or have the individual removed. Uh, right, so we're going to now start the agenda um, and go to the items. The first one, do we have apologies for absence? No apologies to my charge. Right, thank you. The second is declarations <laughs> of interest. Have you got any declarations of interest? Councillor Bra. Uh, item two, which I've called in. Um, after we read the officer's report, I came to the meeting on the march. Thank you very much. Did everybody hear that? Yes. Okay, right. Councillor Brock, can you speak to uh, the public? I'm calling this application as an item to the game, and I'm um, Edward Councillor. Um, I came to this meeting after reading the officer's report for the North of March. Okay. okay. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, are we agreed on those? Agreed. Agreed. Just sign those. <coughs> Yes. Right, the first item on the agenda is uh, application number 20 forward slash 03149, Maidenhead Spiritualist Church, York Road, Maidenhead. Um, I'll hand over to our officer. Is this my presentation? Yes, Sean. Okay, we'll go through it. Um, we, and we do have, uh, we don't have any speakers on this. Okay, so thank you. Michael, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. First slide, please. Um, this application 
code is the demolition of the existing building on the site, which was previously used as a uh, spiritualist church and formed part of the winding walk road allocation set out in the parallel to the ground, which is the building of the main building, which is the north line of St. Rose Ambulance site, which is measured for a similar flat development. Beyond the north lines of why the York Road allocation marks that we can see around here is under construction. Next slide, please. The existing building is a single story prefabricated structure. The application is made in outline form of access, here is layout and scale of the city. Landscaping will be reserved for the user and the state. The existing building serves as the base of the former spirit of this church, which is now relocated to another building in May. The development proposed 49 one and two bedroom apartments. Next slide, please. The building proposed, while being large, would be slightly in a similar position to the existing building, thereby allowing continued access and servicing. Next two slides, please. Building would be an eight story red brick structure with decorative brick courses that have interesting structure together with the balconies and The design is similar to the flat development to the north and respects the new established design of buildings along the stretch of York Street and the immediate surrounding area. Next slide, please. This shows the um, York Street street scene when viewed from the Opposite bank on the auction itself. Next slide, please. Ground floor will comprise the car and bicycle parking, entrance foyer, including the stairs and the lift. Next slide, please. Floors one to seven will comprise seven parts each. Units uh, and floors one to six will have their own balcony, and the units on the upper floors will have their own outdoor terrace. Scheme uh, is considered to represent an efficient use of the site. Um, it would be a well designed building that respects the established character of these or more developments in the surrounding area. Um, and it will continue the, the delivery of the wider walk road site allocation in the BOP. The, to conclude, the, re the recommendation is subject to no outstanding objections from the public authorities. Defer and delegate the head of planning to grant planning commission subject to one referral to the Secretary of State. And should they opt not to call in the application, the commission to grant the subject, which is set out in section 15, and an additional accessible housing commission for the members of the PC. And please believe the agreement to secure a committee of the time. Time. I did, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you hear that? I would like those reasons again, please. No. Yeah. So, to conclude, the recommendation is subject to no outstanding objection from the Council of Colleges, defer and delegate to the head of planning to grant the plan commission subject to one, the referral to the Secretary of State. Should the Secretary of State opt not to follow the application, the permission to be granted subject to the conditions set out in section 15 of the report and the additional accessible housing permission before the members update this evening. And lastly, the completion of the legal agreement to secure a review of development finances. Thank you. Right. Councillor Bry, you call this in. Would you like to? Yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. Oh, right. No, sorry. <laughs> Okay, members. We've got the ward member here. Well, just to kick it off, um, it's not a very constructive uh, comment, but it really has no architectural merit whatsoever, is it? It's just like a high level prison. I mean, I don't want to be disrespectful, but it's, is that going to add anything to make it as an architectural feature? I don't know. Yeah, I'm having said that, I said it, but we'll go through. Councillor Baldwin? Um, I'd like for everyone to understand more clearly why we seem to be boxing ourselves in to a position whereby this panel is on us to defer and delegate the decision subject to certain conditions. 
uh, to the head of planning, subject to a referral to the Secretary of State, because we already know that there's a pre existing objection from the environment agency. And it just seems an amazingly complicated way of doing things. Um, this application, for all the reasons that we keep skirting around in this very complicated recommendation, is not yet in a sufficiently robust state that this panel can consider it properly. Uh, we've already had a discussion regarding viability, and we've seen one argument, one side of the argument. Can I just in interject there, Council Board? Yes. You mentioned we've already had a discussion regarding viability. This panel is sitting now. Would you like to? Well, well, yes. well, well, I, I should come kind of, um, In the technical brief, we received information from officers regarding reports that have been submitted to <coughs> applicants, uh, but we were not able to receive the offsetting information from the independent reports submitted by RBWN. Which is what I meant by evaluation. Yeah, thank you. However, um, the fundamental point remains that this very complicated recommendation is necessitated by the fact that the application itself has serious issues still to be decided, which, as a member of this panel, I would like a future opportunity to weigh in on. And I'm extremely reluctant. To accept the recommendation that we've been on to accept, because it would exclude this panel from the process from this point onwards, when there are unresolved, serious issues that would affect all of the residents of the borough and the Robertson Centre. Um, I am minded to propose a motion that we, we, we amend the recommendation. To remove the word and the words and delegates, uh, and just leave a recommendation that this application is deferred until such time as it is in a sufficiently robust form that it can be brought back to this panel for its consideration. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, okay. John. Thank you, Chairman. So, need to elaborate. A bit um, more. Just if I pick up on Councillor Borden's point, so. The recommendation is not dissimilar to other ones which had come before this committee. So there is uh, an outstanding comment awaiting from the council's apologist, but as has been indicated by officers, they have not previously objected. And so that is not seen to be a preventative matter for this committee to determine the application. Um, the referral to the Secretary of State is brought about because of the fact that the Environment Agency maintain objection. We can only refer to the Secretary of State once the local planning authority, which is this committee in this instance, have determined what they wish to do. So we will always have to have a recommendation that, that asks the committee to make essentially a resolution to allow us to go to the, the Secretary of State. There is nothing else in the view of officers that is unresolved on this application. We have um, seen the information we believe we need to see. We have see that in the report, I presented it to members with a recommendation. I don't view this as a complicated recommendation that is unusual for this committee to have been asked to determine. Now, members may, as they are, you know, freely open to evidently as the decision making this evening, take a different view, but this is not a recommendation that is overly complicated, unlike others that have been brought to this committee, nor is it the position of officers that this application is not yet ready to be determined. But, sorry, may I yes, chair? Yeah. Because that, that's a, to me, uh, that's actually confusing more than myself. Um, what you're asking this panel to do is to effectively delegate its decision making authority to the head of planning, despite the fact that the report admits that no notice of decision could be issued. Even if the head of planning granted the issue, no notice of decision could be issued until the Secretary of State either declined to call in the application and have some success at persuading the Secretary of State to do exactly that, um, or we would be back in the same situation where we're slapped with another Regulation 31 notice 
We've got another extensive public inquiry that no doubt we would then have to spend another ton of money defending. When instead, we could simply say, please go away and provide this time with the information that it considers necessary for it to make the decision that it was elected and appointed to make. I don't see why that's such a complicated argument. So, you, Chairman, I, I apologize if I'm confusing. I think we may be conflating two issues. So there is the one issue that whatever this committee does at this meeting or at a future meeting, we will always have to ask you to delegate back the final authority to issue the decision to the head of planning because there will be the necessity to refer it to the Secretary of State, and should they not choose to call it in, then you would be agreeing to delegate the authority to the head of planning at that point to grant permission. So there will always be a requirement for this committee, whenever it determines, and if, if it determines in positive, to delegate that back to the head of planning. That's perfectly routine. We do that on a regular basis. We do it when there are understanding legal agreements because the legal agreement is, will only be signed, sealed, and finalized after the committee. So the delegation of authority back to the head of planning to actually issue the planning commission in line with the resolution of the committee is a perfectly normal recommendation. Perfectly normal thing we ask the committees to do. Not unusual. Right. I believe there's a separate issue that Catherine Board may have Officers consider enough information that has been presented to the committee to determine the application. Members may be taking a different view, but I think that's slightly separate to the issue about delegation back. That's always that's, that's a perfectly routine recommendation. So, so if I misunderstood, I know. So when we defer, if, if we choose to defer and delegate, and irrespective of the Secretary of State's decision, it comes back to this panel? No, I, I would agree. No. What, what I could agree is confusing as perhaps the words preferred and what we may be more strictly asking you to do is recommend the committee delegate the decision to you. If you refuse to defer, sorry, defer from that recommendation as it stands, I think that would be a more accurate um, wording for what we are, the technicality of what we are asking you to do this evening. Um, defer means that you would be anticipating the committee would reconsider the application at a later date. The way it would work if we simply said delegates is that you would say, we're happy with the application subject to things you may have mentioned. Once those are finalized, please issue the final question. Right, without further reference back to this. Panel. Yes. Right, so that's what I wouldn't want to do. That may be the case in your instance, yeah. Um, because, of course, the other option is that we simply refuse permission to Yes, you can absolutely refuse permission if there's a reason why members feel they wish to. I'm fairly sure that a lot of us would be comfortable with doing neither of those two things. John, I've got other people, other members. I, mean, I think so it's an important issue, and I'm just yeah, wondering. Yeah, but if you can come back on this after hearing what the other okay, members I was say. literally half a sentence away from the Okay. Um, Whereas only defer means it definitely comes back and presumably through the chair uh, in a form that addresses some of the shortcomings that myself and other members of the committee might have expressed this. Just, I'm conscious to answer you, but just to put, yes, if members chose to defer, you would need to explain why, what is the information you think is missing, so that that point could be addressed. Such as it would come back, and I may have to come back on that point. That Thank I can you. definitely be doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baldwin. Right, um, Councillor Reynolds. Thank you, Councillor. And then I've got Councillor Coppinger and Councillor Clark. So it, it seems quite obvious that we're in a position yet again with that page in the building flats in Major Headtown Benson. We've known what the council being put forward as part of the scheme. Um, it, 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 I think members in this panel have got a hand for every time we have this before we build a portable housing. <laughs> 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 I do think a lot of issues with developers coming to the panel time after time after time, and then we want to build a load of flats in Melbourne Head. Please let us build a load of flats, or we're not going to give you the affordable housing that your policies tell us that we should. And it's very clear from our policy that we accept their consent. It's very clear from the housing department on their comments on the code that 14 shared ownership flats could be secured as affordable or 
nine kilowatts a mix of all the mass. I think one thing that we all discussed during the previous event is the fact that we can see quite clearly the developments of biomedical systems, but for this application and where this differs from what the other application would be coming in our centre, we don't have the independent, the council's independent assessment on that liability. And now we've been told in how for our uh, 10.5 or 10.5 We've been told the council is then by the scheme because that actually the scheme probably isn't developing deliverable at all. I find it odd to, to, to see that that developer will get to this day and spend so much money on designing and putting forward all the application and everything and waiting two months two years for it to be heard. If they didn't think it was by financially affordable to be developed, but I think that would be a bad business issue. But we don't have that data in front of us to see what's going on. And I'm not comfortable making that decision where I can see that. Now I know if we look at other facts that have been made in our centre, we had overview of the council's independent private success supports. We have that for London in on the high street, we have that ones. The developments that we've done last year that we said yes for that thing. Coming next door to this. Exactly. <laughs> but we haven't had it for this one. But that might be because there's something different in this one that hasn't been in the last one. I don't know, but I am not comfortable in making a decision either to grant or to refuse permission or even to delegate permission when we don't have that data. It's it's all well and good for the officers to say we've seen it, we're comfortable. We're very good tonight on decision makers that the council sat here as a decision maker. But I would put forward a motion that we defer uh, this application for a five year round of quiet until we as councils we see the independent biodiversity assessment review on that application. And then we can make a decision as to whether we feel that's appropriate or not to grant permission because. At the moment, we're being told we can't make a call for housing contribution, we can't make a call for housing trust that we go to And actually, given the differences that are in the viability assessment reports and the back balance that they have in the property within viability reports and the values that are being sold for other residential units around there, so they're wildly different. So, for instance, it's better than the world I know. Thank you, Councillor Reynolds. I, I, I'm very aware that this council is very concerned about affordable housing for all those people, all our residents, you know, who are finding it difficult. We want to help them in any way whatsoever. And um, we're having lots of flats built, and it's only fair for those people who can't afford to buy outright to have a step on the ladder somewhere along the line in whatever way. Uh, Councillor Cotton. Yeah, oh, sorry. Councillor Clark. Councillor Clark. Thank you. Um, it's an interesting one. Clearly, we're looking at this application on its merits on its own, and some of the comments regarding capability and relevance of its own actually part to one side. But what's clear is that, as our chairman said, our desire to put to, um, to ensure that there are affordable homes is an absolute priority. And that where a significant development, a large number of flats come through over the threshold, getting just one, one double the threshold almost, uh, the number of does require us to look at affordable homes at 30 percent. When we do not have very clear evidence transparently and for the benefit of residents, why there are not going to be those affordable homes that they would reasonably expect our planning process to deliver, then I think we do need to sort of very carefully and we do need to ask the questions. Including whilst this is an outline, effectively that the colour of the principal scale, etc., here is my access. Um, we do, I believe, or I believe, I would support deferral if that enables us to then look at it in a way that residents would expect us to examine, in particular, the affordability and the contribution that that makes to the delivery of our targets and the support of our residents, which is uh, one of the things that we provide. I know also there's an accessibility issue, which is also yet to be covered in terms of the, uh, the uh, quality and cost liability of that element. So there are several other unanswered questions which in themselves might not uh, prevent us, prevent myself from 
Can I just say that I'm not going to support that? I believe a defer because we may, in fact, when we come back to discussion, maybe other elements that we would not wish to explore. I think that's the reason why I support the deferral. But actually, deferral means it would come back and it then would be discussed on its merits, and that of course would fall. Maybe the only issue, or maybe one of the many issues. We can so, are you prepared to change your motions? There's a further point I want to come back to on the point of deferral, but just on the point of the clarity. If you, if an item is deferred, you need to give a reason why you wish to defer it, but when it returns to the committee, you are having your full consideration. Okay. Of it. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for educating me. If I can come in perhaps to that point, though, on the issue of deferral and the reason that has been given. Officers have prepared a report based on their professional recommendations. Within that, they have proceeded the conclusion that professional valuers who have reviewed it on the committee staff and the council staff. Um, the basis for our recommendation will not change if the item is deferred. The report may well not even change because the, the content of the, the, the report you are asking to see is being presented to you this evening. It is firmly my view that you have the evidence in front of you to determine this committee application this evening. There is a risk, of course, the applicant may choose to appeal if a, for non-determination if, a, if a, a deferral is carried out. So it is relevant that the committee have that in their mind as well. I, I wish to underline the point quite firmly, though, that officers have prepared reports professionally based on their own experience and professional expertise and credentials. Um, and they present to the committee the information that is necessary in order to make a sound decision. And that is what I we just interject there, there, yes, on that. Um, on the website, the property next door, which has been developed, we had this, which is prepared on behalf of the Royal Fund. This is a viability assessment. Now, the unfortunate thing is, um, the officers have said they have reviewed it and we haven't, but we don't have a copy of this. Mm -hmm. yeah, you should, Chair. No, I, I, I know that this is a popular view amongst our officers, and I can see your frustration in this. Looking at the, and you say the officers provide the privacy of it. The phrasing is 40 words of what is probably, you know, it, 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 it's hard to count. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, the phrasing is 40 words. It's a count of 30 words, which is like we have one done. It's 40 words long. And all it says is we look at it and we think they are wrong, just because we think it's not a little more at all. Which I don't think is going to be possible. Yes, let's be completely honest. It wouldn't be here when we are going to be possible to so, given that, for the transparency case, and the decision to pay, and the fact that this is a me, I've had on the panel for three years now, and for every one of these big black firms in terms of the current meet at Council and the Environment System Force, this is the only one I've seen where that hasn't been on behind it. 
platform saying that like, well, let's do this and let's have a look to see, let's have a look at this form. And whether we hear uh, an error that has been uploaded, or whether it's actually keeping on there. I can guarantee it's one of the last time we have this problem. Because I can guarantee from now on we don't the system the system the system. Well, I just think for the sake of transparency yeah. and all determinations that this panel make, we do need to see a report. You know, yes. I'm very grateful for our officers and all the work they've done. But when it comes to panel, we need to see these reports. Um, Councillor Coppinger, you're next. Thank you, Chair. I have read those open words of Councillor Lawson and Councillor Park. The reason we have this policy is to ensure that we have a town above for everyone. And we need 30% of the people who are paying no one can argue against that. We have in a development which we are told can't provide any employment. <laughs> Yet others can. Why can't they go back to the drawing board and do it a bit better? By fully supporting the decision that we're going to do and come to the right decision. Oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. 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 Um, I just want to clarify. Just so it's clear in members' minds, what I understand you are asking is simply to defer the item, or you are potentially asking, is simply to defer the item to allow you to have sight of the report. As I say, there's no, you're not asking that report to be rerun, so the conclusion that we presented to you at the future date will be the same as what has been presented to you this evening. Um, it, it's but at least we'll be able to see the report. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's been assessed by professionally qualified persons to do so. But um, a report the hasn't been submitted though. That's it is our concern. Yeah. For, forgive me, Chair, when I say something up front, I have a frustration in my side, which is that we have our policy with only 30% of the homes and we have a set of evaluations that decide whether that can be delivered. But to go from a situation where there may be an argument whether 30% or 30% may or may not be delivered to a situation where there are none delivered is certainly, I would say, for the benefit of residents, and I would also admit for the benefit of this councillor, needs to be explained why we can't have one, two, four, six, 10, 12, 15, 21, or however many we can have, ideally 30% within the development and future developments. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, my concern is that um, if members don't mind listening to me, um, with the COVID and all that kind of thing. Shipping has gone up, so importation is more expensive. Um, the, the materials are more expensive, all the building materials. If the developers are about to build this pretty much right away, get the footings in and everything else going in the next year, then perhaps you know they have been hit with the viability. But if it's delayed longer, we don't know what the, the country's going to be like. It could be much better. Might not be, but yeah. it could be. So, you know, what they're doing now is the basing a viability report <laughs> or an assessment, as, as far as I know, um, on at this time with the with the situation with COVID, with the Ukraine war, et cetera, yeah. at this time. You know, and that's where this comes in, yeah. rather than a good overview of what it might be. Council, yeah. us. As a former transfer, I do know, you know, Kempton Park. Kempton Park. Yeah, so they've got Kempton Park, Rothwell, and the And they're uh, I don't know them, I don't know, but we are in the review. It's BPS is working for BPS. They are a company, a consultancy that happened for charter surveyors. Yeah, you said it there, I never heard it. The thing about this is that they've said it's not viable. I think that's not good enough, and we haven't seen the reports. I like to look at Yeah, we said that. Can I talk then on top of it? It's always a good check that the digital plan has been looked at. You know, if it's done a check, but no, we should see a report. There should be a report that I have if possible. 
and they should fill in the piece of building with them as well. Yeah, sorry, just to pick up on just a couple of points, we would not have it reviewed by two separate people. That's not something we'd be able to consent to do. Okay. Um, we have in the past used the district value of service, we have used BPS, we've used other companies. Um, that aside, the, the point of just in response to yourself, Councillor Hunt, um, it is, and I'll just get the recommendation in front of me, propose that a later review um, is um, secured through the Section 106 agreement. So the point you're making around the position now, it is the recommendation of officers that a review is taken at a later stage because of that point, because you're taking a moment to the sun now, but they would have three years to implement or yeah, so even in the outline for statistics. So that has been considered by officers. So there would be the ability to review the situation at a later point. And if then there was the, the ability for the scheme to support affordable housing, then that could be secured. Uh, sorry, Councillor, can we just ask why this has come to the government in my view, it hasn't. One has been prepared and that has been presented to officers to committee members through the officer's report. If the committee take a different view that that means they have not got the evidence, then that is the view of the committee, but that is not something that is unusual or completely unheard of in my, my experience. Yeah, no, this hasn't been presented to the committee. That's what we're on about, Tom. Well, no, no, I understand that point, but it has to your professional officers. Can they have told you what the recommendation is. How many can you make to do it all the if I, my understanding is very simple, is that you members would like BPS for people. That's my understanding. That's what they're trying to do. 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 That's but it's fair through the chair, to be fair to the officers, they reported it in the What the client is seeking to do is not. Yep. So, what are we going to learn ourselves? Are we going to tell them it's no longer the No, it would just be confirmation of yeah, the it's just a bit transparent state. Thank you, Chair. Um, just on the point about the recommendation for a future review. Um, once again, there's a big difference between us filing the starting gun in public without having seen the report, and then at a later point, a decision or a determination being made vis a vis viability in a sealed room. There's a big difference. Right, members, have we concluded our discussion? Yeah. I think we have one motion on the table, um, and that's been seconded by Councillor Clark. Uh, Becky, can you read the motion? Now? Yes. Um, so, just to confirm, to clarify, um, to defer the application subject to environmental conditions being made publicly available to you. Anything else, or is it just that? <laughs> um, so, the motion has been voted by Councillor Reynolds and seconded by Councillor Farr. I'll be the main vote, which please confirm the vote in four against or abstain on the motion. Councillor Baker? Four. Councillor Baker? Four. Councillor Park? Four. Councillor Hill? Four. Councillor Hill? Four. Councillor Reynolds? Four. Councillor Reynolds? Four. Councillor Hill? 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 Four. Councillor Agenda item next. Which is application 21 forward slash 02331, State Report, High Road, Cookham. And um, I'm handing you over to Michael R. Officer to take us through that. Uh, 
eight home repairs, over three bedroom tiny homes, following the demolition of the existing building. The application of the home might have afforded access and appearance to layout and sound to be considered. Landscape. Can you speak up a bit? Landscape. Uh, sorry. The application is made in outline form, which access, appearance, layout, and scale to be considered. Landscaping will be preferred for for the user. Next slide, please. The development comprises single terrace, eight part of landscaping to the north, west, and garden areas. Um, sorry, landscaping to the north and east, and garden areas to the west. Next slide, please. Steve initially proposed two terraces of four. The roof form was considered to be the common one, which is uh, led to uh, the current approach before you this evening, which is on the next slide. Through the chair, where's the rail? The, the rail. The back <laughs> The scheme was changed to that on the current slide, again, the recycle and then city is got to change the theme, the site of the store is more of a sweet pump. Um, this is a bit of an improvement uh, from that initial submission. The terrace is considered acceptable, as there are two residential terraces to the north of the site on the high road. In addition, there are a range of dwellings, including two and two and a half street. Properties and bungalows within the zone area. The increased areas of landscaping are evident compared to the different sites to avoid the soft landscaping from its entirety. Next slide, mm -hmm. please. Front. This is the uh, well, the front elevation you see in the street scene and the side elevation, high low, as shown at the top. The development is comprised of mixed red brick and render. Along the pebble dash, it will reflect the rain material found in the surrounding area, including the railway station and the works offices to the north. The next two slides slow, sorry, the next two slides show the ground, first, and second floors with the um, plots to seven having the bedrooms and the roof space. The last slide. Is a CGI of the development from the high road to East Lane Junction. Um, as you see from the committee report, officers are happy with the scheme. It is uh, characterized by a range of family homes that are uh, currently proposed. The design reflects the style of property in the surrounding area, as do the material. To conclude, the recommendation is to defer and delegate. Rather than subject to the commission to set out such as the theme of the report <laughs> and the completion of the energy assessment, such as the legal agreement to secure the carbon offset and light charge contributions. Thank you. Um, I have some speakers. Each speaker will be given three minutes, and can I call the owner Bowman? Can you state? <laughs> Uh, what part are you all speaking on the in society? Thank you. <clears throat> you have three minutes, and I'll part and let you know one minute when you've got one minute to go. Okay, that's your show. This site is a key area for the centre of Cook and Rice. Any building on this site is viewed both from the road from the front of it. And from the station platform and adjoining car park area of the rear. <coughs> the existing railway buildings on the site are all single story and result in open views from both sides of the site. The design will block out the longer views that contribute to the present rural village character. In March 21, the panel refused an application for 12 minutes from the site. The rejected application provided 40 bed spaces, and this application proposes exactly the same 40. The amount of accommodation has not been reduced from the objective proposal. The single monolithic block is more than 50 percent longer than the previous proposal. The continuous ridge line is a much bit longer design, and the adjoining individual bungalows can be slain and hit roofs that are small properties and high road. The overbearing bungalows are out of keeping with Victorian 70 detached properties. 
the height means it will overlook the bedroom windows and western room to the west. The minimal size of the front and back gardens, some of which are inadequate by the borough's own type standards, will emphasize the dis disproportionate bulk and mass of the proposed room. This is contrary to the fundamental requirements for policy Q3 item B of the PLB. In particular, design does not accord with the borough line design line principle 7.5.2 on the height of the buildings or the Crooked BGS guidance G6.1 on the design of the buildings or G.6.2 on the design of the roofs. It also distracts from the views of the area of special local interest of the borough and C2.1 of the BGS. Conservation Office's comments regarding impact have been ignored, including the significance of the old waiting room as a non designated heritage asset, which we believe should be retained. Parking bays along the front of the building are contrary to Principle 6.8 and media Science G6.16. Parking spaces on these main frontage should have no provision for turning on site. The street parking on the opposite side of the road, we question whether there is adequate space to turn out in a single manoeuvre. The car parking arrangements also cost a significant length of busy pavement close to a school. We do not think this is compatible with pedestrian safety in the new development. This proposal, just like the previous one, is trying to squeeze too much onto a small site, which is highly visible to the public from both sides. The design does not blend with the surroundings. And the panel unanimously voted to refuse it because its height, scale, bulk, mass, and design represents poor quality design. And so we ask you to refuse it for exactly the same reasons she refused the previous one. Thank you. Thank you very much. And can I call um, Bill Perry, who's Chancellor of Cookham Parish Council? Right. Um, Becky, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. That's the very chairman of Cook and Parish, uh, Parish Council Planning Committee. Uh, the Parish Council agrees with all the submissions you've just heard on behalf of the Cook and Society from Fiona Beaumont. Um, you have some notes from me which I take to read as I'm going to diverge slightly from them. The point about this is a uh, simple problem. On parking, the Parish Council has a long-standing dispute with your planning department as to whether Cookham is accessible. This depends upon your criteria, and um, which specify a half-hourly train service to make it accessible. Cookham does not have such a train service. It has a one-hourly train service, and it should therefore be defined under your own criteria as inaccessible. Um, the half-hourly service is only available at um, peak times. Turning then to a more specific or a few more specific aspects of the site, may I mention to you that paragraph 10.7 of your officer's report uh, concedes that this application is in breach of our wide design guide and as to the size of these three gardens. May I also make a point that although it notes the submissions made by Cook and Parish House in detail, uh, uh, the only comment made on is that they're dealt with later in the report. In fact, virtually none of the specific policy uh, statements or guides referenced by the Parish Council have been covered in the later report. The report has great respect to the officers, it is said over them and simply said, well, it looks all right to us. Uh, in fact, therefore, there is no reference of um, the BDS policy 6.1, 6.8, 11.1, .1, and in particular the approaches to cooking, which the BDS is absolutely adamant should be protected um, and, if possible, enhanced. There can be no doubt that erecting a building of this size, this place, the rail freight cooking, will do nothing of the sort. And thereby, we reach the main problem with this application. The problem with this application is simply its size, its bulk, and its density. The original application flats, which were all turned down against your office's recommendation, and we're grateful for that, and um, had the same number of bed spaces as this one. But it had, as I understand it, only 20 bedrooms. This one actually has 24 bedrooms. 
So although the number of bed spaces is the same, the number of bedrooms is actually greater. And it is as a result of that that you are presented with an application for what is in effect a three-story building. Call it 2.5 stories because it's building in the room. <coughs> but it is in effect a three-story building. And I know for some interest that the CGI which we, which we just presented does not show the Elux windows and roof, which are very apparent on the plan on page 64 of the emphasis report. This is a three-story building. Thank you very much. I have to stop you there. It's three minutes. Oh, I'm very yeah. sorry. Fair enough. And I'm now doing my main trespass on you. No. You can see from the Thank second you. Third on page 64 that there is no space between the new infrastructure okay. and Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And can I ask Ian Rennie? And the same time, you've got three minutes. And our clerk will let you know when there's one minute to go. Thank you. Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank officers for their efforts in getting this application to the committee. We've worked collaboratively on this scheme over the past weeks and months, and the comprehensive report and positive recommendation I hope reflects that. A number of amendments have been made during the determination period to respond to conservation area, conservation officer, amenity group, and residents' comments, and the scheme comes before you with no objections on technical grounds. The proposed redevelopment of the sustainably located Brownfield site will deliver a number of planning benefits. The provision of much needed family housing, enhanced sustainability, and significantly improved landscaping and biodiversity. The high quality design and detailing, coupled with the use of traditional materials, including brick and flint, seeks to ensure that the scheme will sit comfortably within, its, uh, comfortably within and in parts of its surroundings. The number of objections to the application, which I believe is eight, is extremely low for a common site in the centre of the village. So I very much hope members will see this as reflected the efforts that have been made to work collaboratively in bringing this scheme forward. I know the Council of Brass request for the application to come up with me to meet Council Brass should just say thank you for your comments earlier about coming with an open mind. Um, <clears throat> and your comments regarding uh, the harm to the character of the area and the fact that it result in the heritage assets. The officer's report comprehensively addresses these issues, and I would simply note that non-designated heritage assets are afforded no specific protection other than the requirement to consider their loss as part of a balanced judgment against the wider benefits of the scheme. This balanced judgment has been undertaken and officers are unequivocal in their support of the proposals. Thank you very much. Right, so I'm going to put this out now for members to discuss. Um, Councillor Bra, you call this in and I'll refer to you first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is much being said by the speakers. Um, as you know, this is the centre of the rise. Um, the, on the one the side of this um, proposed development, there's one uh, there's only one um, one story building. It will the amended plan, um, swelling plan, it will be an overdevelopment of the site. It will overcome the University of Green High Road in each way. Um, in terms of lost employment floor space, it's clear that the applicant does not tend to exercise community development rights to convert the officers, officers to a residential. Um, Site. Uh, I believe this would be a lot of, lot of employment. Um, and this will also lead to the demolition of non designated heritage assets, which will be a former uh, waiting room for the radio. Uh, and the conservation officer states that the building in relation with the railway station nearby. Work as well is considered to have a degree of historic significance. This is, this is a lot of building complex with the NPPM. In terms of the character and appearance of the area, the length, the width, and the height of the building will result in scale and mass and will uh, appear over the dominant and extrude to the local street scene. The development fails to comply with policy QP3 of the borough of the plan. 
and it's pointing to the number of requirements of the worldwide design guide. And children, village design statement, uh, which I believe is being um, often ignored by the developer and the planner. Um, I would like to move the motion that it should be reviewed on continuing to the policy P33 para B of the borough of the plan and the worldwide design guide 7.5.2. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just querying Councillor Brock, um, you've come with an open mind. Yes. And you are prepared to hear all other arguments? Yes, I am. I am. But you have to put your motion in at this early stage. Uh, oh, I'm, 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 okay, I'm going to hear. Okay, yes. I, I would prefer that. Thank yes, you very much. Fine. No, thank you. Councillor Clark. Thank you. I'll try, try not to be repetitive, actually, uh, in the interest of everybody's sanity. Um, we have um, we have heard a number of um, concerns regarding um, policies and uh, supplementary planning uh, rules, regulatory <coughs> design, etc. And we should give weight to those elements. The heritage element of the Victorian uh, waiting room. Um, whilst it's a non designated heritage asset, Paragon 17, the NDPF does require clear and compelling justification for the loss of that non designated asset. And it is something I consider to be quite a serious loss uh, in the event of development. Uh, remember, this was um, not previously decided, uh, had had a number of concerns on previous applications. It doesn't bear on this application except the concerns that were raised at that time are relevant and are sustained within uh, looking at this application in terms of the bulk, the scale, the parking, etc. And the design generally in keeping with the location is of a major concern. I'm also concerned about the parking, whilst I appreciate there are elements in terms of the number of parking <laughs> layout on this specific site does. Lead me to believe there will be differences in terms of transiting on vehicles, impacts on local parking access and availability, and in particular, uh, the route past the development site um, leads to a number of um, homes occupied by elderly and disabled residents who walk um, sometimes uh, while they're visually because they are visually impaired, they're elderly, they're wheelchair access, etc. And I, I'm concerned that effectively the loss of uh, the loss of ease of navigation, even potentially more pavement uh, blocking, is something that, that clearly would have to be looked at, regardless of what plans come forward in the future that may not be agreed. I raise it as an issue. I raise it at the, um, the previous uh, application. <laughs> um, there's also raised concerns within the documentation regarding the layout of, of garden space, green space, and industry space. But there are enough elements that, that, that the messages that are sent within the, 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 um, the concerns that are raised, the objections that are raised, and the very clear um, um, statements made by both the local society and the party council representatives to say that clearly there are elements of grave concern regarding what this would mean to the village if it were to be passed, if it were to be accepted. And therefore, I will listen. To other arguments that might be made, but on the evaluation that I have so far made, I could not support this application. Thank you. I'd like yes. to bring our officer in um, on the heritage. There was just a couple of points I just wanted to pick up. One, um, both both members have spoken so far and referred to the loss of the non-designated heritage asset. I think members need to be mindful of the previous decision, which did not refuse it on the basis of that loss. Obviously, the significance of the heritage asset was assessed then, it's been assessed again. Um, so I would just make that point to members that it was not an objection to the scheme previously, which also included the loss of said non-designated heritage asset. One other point, just picking up on Councillor Clark's comment there around sort of legibility. Um, there's no in terms of pedestrian access, um, there's no planning concern raised in that point. There is a note in the report, as you'll see, that they will need to also get 
essentially a, a different intent in terms of the drop curve, but that's under a separate process. And um, the planning, there's no planning um, concern raised from that point. Uh, but I just wanted to clarify the point about the non designated Thank you very much. Councillor Walters. Yeah, on the point of the non designated S last time, we're dealing with this application now. They know the one. I don't know if we look back to the last one, we can be doing this afresh. This is a good application. Do you determine, sorry, yes, you are determining the application, but one of the things you need to do, or two of the things you need to do, is determine it against planning policy and other material considerations. Planning history and previous decision very clearly fall into that camp of other material considerations. So it would need to be very clear why something that wasn't an issue a year or a ago was now if the actual facts on the ground didn't change. Right, thank you. Can you okay, just, going um, through going sorry. through the, the local plan. Are we looking this is what we've discussed about the effect of a new local plan, which I find very difficult to interpret because it's so vague, it's not specific enough to the old local plans. But you still can make pay out of this if you want to, if you want to find the right thing. Now QP3 the words from the some policy there's respect and enhance the local, natural, or historic character of the environment. Now, Cookham Station is a station in my environment. You have an attractive Victoria waiting room, and a block of this block does not in any way conform to this policy. But an attractive Victoria waiting room certainly would, plus the fact that there are non designated. Work as cottages, you presumably work on the railway. So there's a lot of historic content there, and it must be of value to those people who live in the On QP3F, it talks about um, retaining important local views of historic buildings or features and talks about Windsor Castle. Well, it isn't exactly complex, but it's the same sort of work. There's something of historic value there. An old Victorian, I must say, we got one into it. Well, of course, that just a bit of a marginal thing, but that's in the policy. It talks about minimizing on QP3. What is it? Here we are. G, 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 Q, QP3I, designed to minimize the visual impact of traffic and parking. Well, all those cars parked on the, you know, on the front there. Uh, certainly would add to the character of development, but the sort of thing you see, am I right to say, when you come you come into the cook and you'll see all that, and that's particularly attractive to see, I would imagine. Also on page 54 of the local plan, over the three, you've got things like the largely low rise rural context and landscape setting of towns and villages are important characteristics of the fire, which should be preserved and enhanced. And you can hang your hat on that 6.141 to some degree. It's not broken, it's a strong arm. But all this is reinforced in section 12 of the 201 National Planning Policy Framework, where it talks about actually for me, I found this on page actually the creation of high quality and beautiful uh, you know, buildings, beautiful, that's the word they use. I've, I've never seen that in a, you know, the town planning document. And also another reinforcement in section 16, particularly paragraph two and three, <laughs> it talks about the effect of an application of a significant non designated commission tax set should be taken into account in determining the activities. Well, that's not what it's done. In general, application directly or indirectly affects non direct designated area. A, a balanced judgment required, or that's you know, very subjective in many ways, will be required having regard to scale of harm or loss and the significance of heritage area. And you might consider it is significant. I know it's small, but it's, it's the only thing they've got there. And, uh, you know, I think just because it's small enough, you know, not like Windsor Castle. There's no reason why it shouldn't be taken if, if it's worthwhile. Okay, go to HO5, the housing business. Yes, there's a marginal thing there. All the internal room is, is adequate in the rooms there, except for the three arms out of the which are switched on the back. More importantly, is ED3 on page 91 of the book. It talks about 
there are two climate services that are due. And this proposal is completely contrary to their policy, which is on. Can I, can I just sort of carry on with that? 91. Page nine. <coughs> Sorry. Now, here it's very important. This is ED3. It's about employment, a lot of employment space. The two small businesses, I understand it, less still in existence, but I agree. There's a gym there. Uh, I don't know where they've had the marketing of the advice on here about whether they're trying to get rid of them or what. I don't know, but um, it says uh, development of those find sites currently in employment use, which this is, I gather, will be supported. Quite clear. We're not supporting it. We're chucking it out and putting a lot of that at where is it? Um, and then what's the next thing? Um, DT. Page 97. Right, here we are. We're talking about hierarchy of you know, business centers. And Cook and Village um, has been decided to be included in that hierarchy of centers. It's listed in the list. It's Windsor and Maidenhead, there's Asker and Sunnigal, and then local centers, centers Cook and, Cook and Rise, included as well. And a whole series of others. So it is important to keep that. And also, it is two and a half stories high. And it is higher. So I've seen the site, I've been on the site visit twice. I went to the last one, the, the, the outline application. I've been reached more recently. And it is going to be higher than as half. Half of those buildings will be converted and refurbished. They will pump somewhere in them, somewhere else. Um, and then I'll finish our chair for the day. Um, we've gone through the business of prior approval, haven't we? So we don't have to, we can't say we don't do this, they can do the other. And um, that's another thing. No, I think that's it. And so I, I don't support this application. <clears throat> Um, sure. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Just a couple of points I wanted to come back on there um, for, to be clear on members' understanding. So this point around the non-designated heritage affects. First of all, just to reiterate the point I made already in advance, that was not a reason for refusal, i.e. members in the previous committee accepted its loss, they refused it for different reasons. Um, the significance of that heritage asset hasn't changed, the weight given to that hasn't changed. Um, what members need to do is consider the public benefits of the scheme, weigh that against uh, any harm they consider arising from the loss of the non-designated heritage asset. It is not, um, as the applicant themselves said, it's not statutorily listed. Um, it's just a different, a different um, protection under, under the MPPF to, to other, to simply not designated in the day. I think members need to be very cautious in their consideration of that, given the previous decision. Um, if the applicant, if, they, if the application was to be refused, and the application chose, applicant chose to uh, uh, take their right of appeal, I would caution members against introducing a reason for refusal uh, around the loss of the designated heritage assets. Um, the other point on the loss of employment, as I set out in the report, um, this position of officers and the recommendation of the officers, that again, talking about these other material considerations, you need to take into account. One of those is fallback positions, and that is, i.e., what could they do to the site if this permission were not granted? What could they do to the site tomorrow, even if it were granted? Um, so, I, it is a realistic proposition that this other thing can occur. That is the position in this case. I do not believe. So, that is the prior approval. So, there is the, the position, the evidence was presented to officers demonstrate that it's a realistic fallback that sought prior approval so they could convert those commercial units to four residential units without needing anything further from the committee. <laughs> they could do that even if they get permission granted, they can do that even if they get permission refused. Um, but that, in essence, establishes the principle of residential use on the site and the principle of the loss of the commercial units. So refusing the planning permission on the basis of the loss of community commercial units isn't going to protect you because they can go tomorrow they can go this evening um, because the applicant has the right to undertake that conversion. 
think it's important to members understand those two other material considerations in terms of what they're, they're thinking about. And I know there's been some other points again around scale and massing and, and the bulk of the building and the layout of it. Um, clearly, it's the recommendation of officers that we find this to be an acceptable scheme in terms of its impact on the character and of the area. Um, I would um, caution drawing direct correlations between measuring the refuse scheme and measuring this scheme. They're very different in essence. We had a block of flats, now we have a, a row of terrace dwellings. Members may still have concerns with that. That's obviously your decision to make. Officers recommend that it, it is acceptable, but I wouldn't simply extrapolate it. The flats with this high, so if the, the houses are this high, they must also be harmful. You need to also consider what is the harm arising from this actual place. Can I respond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got other speakers. Okay. Yeah. No, just on the, on the business about uh, the, the benefits. Do we need these benefits? We've already gone way above our objectives as dwellings. There's far too many houses in the loop and what aren't working hard, everybody knows. Way above that. We had to build 14,240 houses in 2013 and 2033. That's meeting 100% of our objective necessity. If we did that, we didn't need to have to do that. Greenbelt, flooding, crown land, and so on. So on top. But instead of that, we've added a lot of nearly 3,000 houses on top of that, which we will not be very far to do. And it's caused a release of greenbelt. It's nothing to do with this particular thing, but it just shows that we don't need to do these houses. And if you've got a firm case here of what the local people ruin in their little part of the world, I don't think we should do it. Just sort of common sense, get away from planning or technicalities. Um, we don't want to see them. I mean, that block of flats are going to be a little bit slower. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and some animals. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think, in my mind, the fact that this application is much better than the previous application that we looked at for a long time. Um, if you're looking at that, and you had a very large block of flats in a Bungalow and semi detached and terrace neighborhood compared to this, it is much improved. And I think this is a benefit that we've shown actually. We said no to that. Again, it's not a recommendation at the time, but we, it wasn't the case that the development through all the, the words that get added around in certain fields, but actually we come back with it because I think it's much more sensible development. Is it better than having the four when you fall back to convert to a building? I don't know. I'm not actually sure whether this is better than the fallback. And for me, it's not an accident statement. It, it probably wasn't written to be designed and such, but it, it almost comes across to me reading it a little bit fascinating. In my group, if you don't say yes to this, then we will be the four rallies. It, it makes that quite a lot. That's personally how it came across to me. Um, it's not like it would be like for reading the information, but then might. Um, and obviously, it's quite important, and the design accent said a lot about community involvement, um, which is fantastic and consulting them to see what they prefer uh, is. <laughs> and we should do a lot more of in the borough. But looking at the leaflets that um, the developer sent out to the local community, asking for their thoughts and things. The design that they put forward on that leaflet is exactly the same as the one that they submitted to the planning application. The one they submitted to the planning application for us for looking at it on. Um, surely it would be better to do the format after it's into what you will use, what you see built on this site, and then the design of the scheme, sure, that, rather than reflect the design of the scheme, and then going for residence articles. Surely, as a way of ranking. We probably would have been sat here tonight if the developer had done it in that way. Also, they didn't, and we didn't consider what's in front of us, we could probably be a time over, but that's just a maybe a talk for the developers to take away. Um, it would be hard to an engine there, but I'll just very quickly touch on that. Um, it, it said in the report that it's only six square meters of her garden, these groups, and therefore it's not really important. It would be quite great to see the back in the reports. If it wasn't really important, we wouldn't have had that minimum standard there to start with. We, we said in our gardens, 55 square meters. 
We said that for a reason. We didn't choose 49, we didn't choose 48, we chose 55. And so the current development is still the deal that I'm being disappointed. Um, and, and the idea that the gardens are still very changing in shape. I don't personally see the mitigation for that as a sit down from the walls. I personally don't know whether these eight properties is better than before just converting the walls for the development of the town. But actually, would a few detached lands be better here in the future? We've seen the developers willing to take our comments on board as they can, but they don't clear in their consultation leaflets. By the comments that they'll receive, and they have looked at time to help with it. I don't think this is a perfect scheme. I haven't made my mind yet, I'll go to the next. But I think there are still a lot of room for there's a lot of room for improvements. If this was to be protected space, I would like to see potentially a third role of place in the back of that. It's actually, I feel like there is a good opportunity on the site to develop something that is acceptable for the residents in the area. But also would help us as a borough to develop uh, to deliver more residential units than yeah. <clears throat> Any other members wish to speak? Councillor Hill, do you want to make a comment? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'll you in. I'll just go for a moment. Yeah, yeah. I'll be very brief. Um, I, I actually like this scheme a lot. I, I do actually feel that we have one of the more zero on bus. So it's a good system as well, but it's very well designed. However, the, as has already been said in the extreme detail, so the maximum scale of the scheme uh, is inappropriate for that location. I, I was at the last panel, I did vote against the last scheme. And uh, certainly I'm going to support the council as well. Second, second term motion. She hasn't made it yet, so just wait. I didn't have a call later. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, when she does it, I'm supposed to. Um, so I do think the masses and scale this is, 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 is too, it's too big when looking at the other provinces around it. I mean, it's my, my key, key objection. It is a long block. But he's quite tall. I know there's a memory search for it. There's a hill there, and that one moves to go above it um, further up the road. But so when you look at this huge rate of block, which is the largest block, it does actually just put you in that particular area, area of the um, I know we're not allowed to get guide developers to three, three pairs of semi detached houses, might look a bit better than the way break it up. Those here you've got eight, eight in, a, in a very large terrace, and that's not what we have in this part of the world. There will be the same as <laughs> individual properties, so I think the developers will secure it there um, on design. Also, um, the opposite point might be about the sanctions. Paul gives us about the opportunities to limit development that just for the emphasis. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to come back on that. Yeah. Yes, um, I think it doesn't really concern me. There's far more potential in this site than just to uh, convert to those, those particular offices next to the railway park. So I don't think the developer, well, I can't second guess them, but I'd be surprised if they came back with that. Okay. okay. Um, I'm bringing in my board. I just want to point out that when you say there's access, I guess there are about like, two terraces opposite the site. It's a rather good road. So you can get the road. Yeah. So yeah, but they're not terraces are characteristic. We completely apparent. Yeah, but they're not they're not the road. Yeah, it's one is they don't refer to the road as being the road. Maybe I should go back. There is one uh Anchor Pub as well. They're refurbished. I'll look it up. Anchor Pub would be the other one. Yes. I thought there was a terraces, but they weren't the sort of mass stuff. I mean, that may be the consideration that Bevis, the viewing officers, is, and I think the point that Michael is just trying to make that make clear to you is. There are terraces. Terraces are a characteristic element of the area. Immediately next door, you've got the the bungalows, but yeah. terrace dwellings 
uh, as seen in the context. You may view that they are. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Baldwin. Thank you. Prior approvals come up to the police council. We've got a committee in the context and I'm going to discuss it. Um, I want to focus on paragraphs 10.3 and 10.4 because in tandem they are used to justify the session in 10.5. But I'm struggling to understand. So I will go very slowly. Uh, this is not my area of expertise. And please feel free to cut in if I'm going to, don't wait till I finish. If I'm getting this completely wrong, shut me up. I will be through the chair. We, we actually did cover this at the beginning, but please carry on then. Uh, not quite in the context of the okay. I'm going to mention it earlier, but thank you for reminding me. Okay, um, okay so 10.3. The applicant, however, obtained prior approval for conversion of the buildings for residential units. Prior approval application was approved down, was approved on the 15th of September 2021, and confirmed the applicant and lawfully changed the use of the existing buildings to the four residential units proposed without the benefit of formal transmission. 10.4. Case law has held that in such circumstances, the basic principle is that for a prospect, a fallback position to be a real prospect, it does not have to be probable or likely, a possibility will suffice. In such circumstances, the way to be afforded to such fallback position is further demonstrated by the developer's intentions to develop a site. In this case, the planning history of the site compromises a previous application for a platted scheme, together with this current application, which adds weight to the presumption that it is the developer's real intention to develop this site. Now, based on those two paragraphs, 10.5 comes to the conclusion that the weight to be afforded to the class A prior approval represents a material consideration of great weight. Yes. Conversely, therefore, the weight to be afforded to the loss of the town centre uses within the local centre. However, unfortunately, it is going to reduce. So the assumption that this fallback position is, let's get this right now, um, oh, 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 oh. a possibility, only a possibility, is in and itself enough to reverse what would be the normal weight of previous, previous planning history? <clears throat> Reverse. Literally flips it on. Now, what worries me is that I don't know how to work a mode on phone. Um, what worries me is that that is based on case law, which isn't defined in the report. It's referenced literally, case law has helped that in such circumstances. I'm not aware. So, did we consult anywhere on this? Again, we have our legal officers. We have legal officers who have read the report before they come to committee. But it is your professional officers' experience and judgment that they are employed for, yes. that they are asked to make recommendations based on. There is innumerable instances, appeals, case law, ones within this, this borough. It is our professional recommendation based on the fact that we are qualified planners um, that it is held frequently on appeal, on judgment, yeah. that fallback, you know, fallbacks need to be given this level of weight um, in, in determining an application. I have no reason why that would, you know, that is my professional recommendation to you. There's no reason why that should not be the case. Um, what we are saying in this instance is that yes, they have been granted a prior approval. They clearly have an intent to do something with the site by virtue of the fact that they continue to make applications, plus they have made the prior approval. Can, can we just stop there? Because this is the crux of it. Yeah. So what you just said, and I said and I said this here, was that the fact that they obtained this prior approval is itself evidence that they do intend to do something else. That's what you said. So the question I want to ask, 
is what happened. Well, they don't have to implement any of the permissions they do or do not get in the absolute fullness of of time they have time in which they can do it so they can look at an alternative and then fall back on something they've previously got consent for hence the, the terminology mm -hmm. there's nothing to prevent them there's nothing to say right you've got that that's what you've got to build they can continue to see ad infinitum of what they could or could not do with the site that doesn't lessen the weight for what they could when they choose to fall back upon and rely on so based on the case law that is referred to simply as the case law. The fact that the inaction since they received the prior approval is nothing that we can give any weight to in terms of judging whether or not they really have the intention to develop this. Yes, that's what I was saying. You and can't, that's what they, you can't, yes, you cannot give, you, or you should not be giving weight to the fact they haven't yet done it. Because that doesn't bear on the fact that they, they could. that there is a possibility yeah. that they could. I, just from a technical point. Wow, we're going to get more technical on the last application of the slice of the was going to be due. I know. So obviously they don't have a plan for the scheme of what we prefer. Yes. Um, they had until the 15th of September 2024 to. Um, the conversion to the previous dimension or as a I'll say it was, but it doesn't be important that it doesn't apply to the other one where we refuse. No, no, I understand. That's 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 gone on the subject. Jimmy, uh, okay, thank you for that question. I'm sorry that I might necessarily make that more complex. It was confusing for me, and I'm very pleased to get the clarification. Uh, just one last thing to mention very briefly. Uh, three or four times this evening, um, officers have made reference to the fact that because in previous refusals, we haven't, as a panel, specifically mentioned a particular aspect, the implication seems to be that then at a later date, we cannot remember an objection that we have not previously made. And it's excluded for all time. Yeah. If, if I may respond to him, mean, what would happen on appeal is if you refuse, um, it, that's speculating that we get to that point, but, but this is the, the reasoning behind what I'm saying to you, is that if someone were, an inspector were looking at a refusal that now introduced a reason that previously had not been cited by the local planning authority, right. which is who we are, ultimately the decision is made by, they're going to wonder, well, what is the reason why that is now a concern? something will have to have changed. So you have got the instances where something perhaps on a previous decision had been considered a heritage asset, and then it was, that would be a change in circumstances between the previous refusal and this one. But that's not the case for in the team. It was considered and not refused previously. So you so would- and Consider that and it was featured in the report. It was featured in the report. Members at that previous committee considered that report. In fact, without rehearsing too much of the history, it was deferred from a previous meeting to allow us to undertake that assessment on the non-designated heritage assets, and then it returned to the committee. Or I think it's actually withdrawn, sorry, rather than deferred. Um, so that was definitely fully considered. So I remember the various correspondence on all of that um, in the previous, and members did not cite the loss of that heritage asset at that time as a concern. So if you were to do it now, and this were to go to appeal, why would why have you done it? Based on that would be the question, and there'd be a risk of cost associated with that because you'd be introducing a new reason for diesel. Well, that that means, means, but at least that doesn't make sense. It really doesn't because we are told each application we get over on this merits and dealt with a fresh that they know this is what I mean. It's it's definitely I don't really understand how it's been forgot last time. Well, that's just no, if you say whatever it is, I'm gonna stop this no, 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 because I've seen it before, Council Bosses. I've seen an application being refused several times yeah. by committee, and um the last time it was refused, um, a member brought something else into the uh, equation. The next thing is it went to appeal and it was designated at appeal. The inspector said this should not have been put in that bit. Yeah. 
it should not have come in. So, you know, the bit that was brought in on the last application. That so, we know the be, uh, so what we need to do is, if you're going to refuse everything, put everything in. Put everything in. Yeah. I'm going to say we're going to have some very, very long decisions. So, if that's, and the other... See, yeah, I know. So, the, other, the other thing is, on case law mentioned by officers, yeah. I think we'll discuss this on our training session because we need to know what comes. We need more training. Okay. Yeah, just okay. one of those. Okay, so that would be that closure. Now, any other members wishing to speak on this? I think Tony has to be based on what yes. comes through my ear. Yeah. Okay. No, nothing's left. Yeah. Okay. Yes, just want to be really clear on the point that Councillor Walters was making. Every application comes to the committee for them to determine. But one of the factors you need to take into account are these other material considerations, and that is where the planning history comes into it. So it's not that we're saying you are determining it <laughs> not, not in its completeness, but you have to give weight to those other material considerations. That's the point. Okay, Councillor Bangor. Yeah, I think many members are articulated their views today about this uh, development um, with someone who's actually lived in Cookham and very near to the bed of myself. I feel it's it is overdeveloped of the area and not in keeping with the area. I mean, if something came back to the panel <laughs> different, I think that would be you know, maybe something to look at. But my concern is, is if this goes ahead, what else would we put forward and, and, and what will stop from the area put forward? So that's my concern. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, now, vote. <coughs> Anybody want to put a motion forward? That's the bar. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Is a uh, motion on the scale, five left uh, of the bottom. Um, local points, it will take part of the interference. Do you want lots of employment because it's all ready? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all ready okay. to do in class seven. Okay, harm to character and appearance. Okay, uh, impact on living. Uh, then I'll sorry, what was that impact on living, living conditions? In what you mind the words? In what subject might the second the garden? Okay, I'll just get that. Okay, uh, harm of this development. Clearly outweighs benefits of the site. Um, I will say I would like to refute this on the policy QB3 event. Apparently, we know the QB3 event. And the uh, worldwide design guide 7.5.2. What about the other idea? Yeah, that's what I don't think we need to chop policy in. We can. It will be the main set of what you want. Can I, can I repeat that what I've written down to make sure I understand and to make sure everyone's got that? So, from my understanding, what you are saying is proposed development because of its scale and matting would represent overdevelopment of the site, which would be harmful to the character and the appearance of the surrounding area. Uh, you consider that those harms outweigh any benefits, and therefore it's contrary to the borough local plan and the BQP3 and the borough local plan. Yes. Are you thinking about intensification of the site as well? But I, I think we have we, I mean, that, that would become very dependent on intensification. Okay. <laughs> with with, with respect, I, I, I try and learn, and I'm picking up on the issues that are on the previous application, which comments could or may not be considered, which ones have previously been discussed and discounted, but can or cannot be brought forward. Uh, I'm very happy and would like to second the council's last proposed motion. But I was also asked, can we just take a second? Sorry. No, it would be. Yeah, I can't explain. No, there was no motion for him. There was no motion at that time. Okay. Really. But, but please let me finish. Um, in the interest of being very clear and concise regarding what we are, uh, what we are requesting or what we're deciding, could we be minimal, please, in our reasons? We need to be specific regarding our, um, our concerns on the mass scale of design in keeping um, design statements and policies. <laughs> but clearly, the issues regarding the heritage asset, etc., because you have been discussed, shouldn't be included within, within the motion. Could 
we will stick the motion to the to the to the specific elements. I think they will be laid by Sean. But 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 can you please officers relay that to a motion that picks up on that specificity uh, for clarity to guide and uh, to be clear to, to those who can this determination if we were to do it. Thank you. Yeah. I think the motion is clear. It's, it's a scale back of the overdevelopment harm to correction period. So those who are essentially the harm set member of the motion is identifying and putting forward as the reasons why they consider the application of it. Okay, we just get it clear. We've got the policy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. We don't need the policy. Well, we we, we, we do no, I'm stopped all that. Officers, niche. Our officers will know cases. We just need to, we're, we're not professionals. We're we not don't need to know what the policies are. No, I won't hang on. I'm chairman. How do you speak like We're making a decision. And I think we've got to know what policy we're applying. The officers. We, we have already so, said so, that we're not going to do that. So, 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 well, there's no harm in saying it's 805, EG3, yeah. yeah. and the National Planning and Policy Committee as well, which is counted the bar of the duty of the general objectives. But also, we don't have any other motions on the table? Okay, we'll move from here. Okay. 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 So much again, four. 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 Councillor Hill? Four. Councillor Hunt? Abstain. Councillor Brown? Four. And Councillor Alders? Four. Okay, so that is six, vote four, one against two, three, seven, she should make motion. Right, thank you very much, members. Um, right. In depth conversation. Right, we move to the next agenda item. Which is the planning field received and the second report. And that's on page 67 of the agenda. Thank you, mem uh, mem uh, members of the public. Um, I see, Chairman, on that page that the Ray means, well, that the rules. Yes, that is. After that, that, that side of the end. Right. Any comments, Councillor Baldwin? Thank you. Um, picking up on uh, Councillor Walters' comments, um, 2102866 and the previous planning for sleep for that city um, represent a tremendous opportunity for the members of this panel and, frankly, um, the authorities as a whole to learn lessons about <laughs> how the how we understand the possibility that applications can be allowed to come forward that are materially the same um, in intervals that suggest a ruthless pursuit of planning permission. Um, Without any let or heed, uh, my understanding is that if a planning application is refused and it's resubmitted in a form that's considered to be too similar to the previous refused application, that the applicant can be made to wait for a period of time. Um, this application has come to panel 
three times. On all three occasions, it was recommended for refusal. And yet we found ourselves in a position where we had to, well, we could only we could only approve the application on the basis of the product of the Secretary of State. We did so, I think, very unwisely and against the services recommendation. The damage done to the reputation of the World Bank and the lack of confidence that it's manifested in the decision making of planning throughout the planet, including this planet, um, will take years to repair. And there are lessons to be learned. And I think it would make an excellent case study in which officers could explain how this situation is ever about to develop. And if that involves some hard lessons for the panelists in this panel to learn, we should learn. And I would like to formally ask that we consider a mechanism through which a case study can be made of the various approaches to the development of the field so, so that we can all learn the lessons that I truly believe we need to learn. Thank you. I agree. I go with you. Can I say something to everyone? Well, that. But you always do say something. <laughs> well, I won't say anything. It's up to you. So, can I just check with the Are you like for or against? Oh. I mean, they, they, they withdraw the thing. Okay? So, why not let see me not lie? I suspect the story. I mean, instead of making an inquisition, I mean, well, Did I use the word inquisition? No, but that's the sort of thing you want to do. I think I'll use the word case study. No, no, you wanted to look into it, how, how the officers did this and how they did that. We know what they did and what that happened. And, uh, I think I think that's it's something that's gone now. It's gone. It's withdrawn, it's gone. And no stand up here in terms of all the way from your Then I reserve the pursue the matter individually. I don't see actually. It will damage the <laughs> for years and years to come. Certainly hope not. So the officers of the property section so you the better off going to the floor I think it was okay tell me on three occasions I remember them you're talking about we could ask that you actually think it's the organization could be good well that I didn't think about what it might be um, but it's probably not relevant to this committee would be no, 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 no. But yeah, if we knew there was a forum, well, it's well, different, 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 different avenue of, of who may be the right people yeah. to have that conversation. Absolutely. And if that involves Scott, then all the best. Yeah. Well, that, I look forward to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Members? Okay. Um, well, I'd like to thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, Let's see. Thank you very much.